Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks Plays Ships of the World of Warships and today we will be talking about the cruiser codenamed Phoenix. Uh, it was a little bit hard to dig up the reference on it but uh, eventually it turns out to be the Omaha class cruisers which were a class of the light cruisers built by the United States Navy. So the Phoenix is actually based on 1917 scout cruiser proposal that was planned as a successor to the Chester class. They were designed to be fast, have seaworthiness and a top of the line observation and communication suite in order to serve as eyes of the battleship fleets. They were gunned up and armor later in the project's development so they could fill a destroyer pack leader role. The comparatively high cost, as much as for destroyers, re resulted in Congress flat refusing uh, to allocate money for their construction, as they feared they would become obsolete before construction would finish. Experience gained during the First World War proved that viability of a scout cruiser design resulted in plans being radically redesigned into the Omaha class. So a little bit about the history of the Omaha class. Uh, for example, if you try to Google on the wiki, you should look for Omaha class cruiser and, and a good example is USS Milwaukee CL5, which was built uh, around 1923 and, uh, and it was on commission until 1949. So uh, let's read a little bit about the history. Maneuvers conducted in January 1915 made it clear that U.S. Atlantic Fleet lacked the fast cruisers necessary to provide information on the enemy position and to deny enemy information of the fleet's own position to screen friendly forces. Built to scout for a fleet of battleships, the Omaha class featured high speed, rough, around 35 knots, uh, for cooperation with the destroyers and the 6-inch guns to fend off any destroyers and the enemy might send against them. Displacing 7,050 long tons, uh, which is roughly 7,160 tons, they were just over the 169 meters long. The Omaha class were designed specifically in response to the British Centaur subclass in the C-class cruiser. Although from a modern viewpoint, the conflict between US and Great Britain seems implausible, US Navy planners during this time up to the mid-1930s considered Britain to be a formidable rival for power in the Atlantic and the possibility of armed conflict between the two countries plausible enough to merit appropriate planning measures. The Omaha mounted four smokestacks uh, look remarkably similar to the Clemson class destroyer. A camouflage scheme was devised to enhance the resemblance. Their armament showed the slow change from the casemate mounted weapons to the turret mounted guns. They carried 12 six inch uh, which is 53 caliber guns which four were mounted in the tw twin turrets on four and one aft and the remaining eight in casemates four on each side launched in 1920 omaha designated c4 and later cl4 uh, had a displacement of 7050 tons the cruisers emerged with a distinctly old-fashioned appearance owing their World War I type stacked with the twin casemate mount cannons were stacked among the last broadside cruisers to be designed anywhere. Additional torpedo tubes and hydrophone installation was ordered. As a result of the design changes placed on the ship mid-construction, the vessel that entered the water in the 1920 was badly overloaded design that even at the beginning had a rather tight. The ships were sufficiently insufficiently insulated, too hot in the tropics, too cold in the north. Sacrifices in weight savings in the name of increased speed led to severe compromise in the habitability of the ship. While described as a good ship in seaway, the low forebed lead to frequent water ingestion of the bow and in the torpedo compartments and the lower aft casements. The lightly built hull sleek that sustained high speed steaming containment in the oil tanks with seawater. These drawbacks notwithstanding, the US Navy took some pride in the Omaha class. The featured compartmentalization per personal machinery was laid out in the unit system with alien alternating groups of boiler rooms and engine rooms to prevent immobilization by single torpedo hit. Magazines were first to be placed on the center line below the water line. A serious flaw in this ship's subdivision was complete lack of watertight bulkheads anywhere above the main deck or aft in the main deck. 
originally deserved to serve as a scout. They served throughout the interwar period as leaders of fleet flotillas, helping them resist the enemy destroyer attack. Tactical scouting became the provenance of the cruiser aircraft, and the distance scouting role was taken by the Navy by the heavy cruiser spawn Washington Naval Treaty. Thus, the Omaha class never performed any of their design function. They were relegated to the fleet screening role, while their high speed and great volume of fire were mostly appreciated. Due to the large top weight lasting on the ships, compounded by high mount catapults, the Navy removed two lower after firing casemate mounted 6 inch guns in the 1939, fairing over the casemate's port and starboard. These were the oldest class of cruisers still in service in the Navy in 1941. All of them modified during the war with additional 20mm and 40mm anti aircraft guns and radar. Both the Detroit and the Raleigh were at Pearl Harbor during the attack, with Raleigh being torpedoed. Detroit, along with St. Louis and Phoenix, were the only large ships to get out of the harbor during the attack. The ships of Omaha class spent most of the war deployed in the secondary theaters and the less vital tasks than those assigned to more recently built cruisers. The Omaha were sent in places where the significant armament might be useful if called upon, but with their age and limited abilities were likely to be tested. These secondary destinations included patrols of the east and west coast of South America, convoy escort in the South Pacific, um, far from the front lines of battle patrols and shore bombardments along the distant grades, frigid Aleutians and Kuril Island chains and bombardment duty in the invasion of southern France where naval resistance was expected to be minimal. The most significant action that any of these class ships saw during was the Marblehead's participation in early war actions on the Dutch East Indies, most notably Battle of the Makassar Strait and the Richmond's engagement in the Battle of the Komarsky Islands. None of the ships were wartime losses, Relay torpedo damage at Pearl Harbor and Marblehead damage at Mascar Strait were only significant wartime combat damage sustained by the class. The ships were of the class were considered obsolete as the war ended and were decommissioned and scrapped within seven months of the surrender of the Japan, with the exception of the Milwaukee which was loaned to be Soviet Navy and was scrapped and returned to US Navy control in 1949. Some of the ships of the class would be Omaha, the CL-4, Milwaukee, CL-5, Cincinnati, CL-6, uh, Rayleigh, CL-7, Detroit, CL-8, Richmond, CL-9, Concord, CL-10, Trenton, 11, Marblehead, 12, and Memphis, CL-13. So that's a little bit about the history of the Omaha class, which we know and love as uh, Phoenix. Uh, my experience playing with Phoenix is uh, a mixed bag. I've learned when I'm trying to use it as a cruiser, I am failing miserably, and that actually shows due to her obsolete design. When I'm trying to challenge battleships, it doesn't work very well, despite the fact that uh, she has torpedoes, but the thing is that she is so lightly armored that her name of the game is more ambush. So, like, hiding between the islands or somewhere around the island and waiting for a uh, completely, you know, uh, unaware battleship to pass by and then ambush with torpedoes and finish off with guns. That's the way how, at least, I see that this cruiser should be used. Also, the go another good use would be as a potential destroyer hunter. Because her superior armament will, would easily overpower any destroyers. However, her maneuverability and torpedoes are something to left, leaving something left to be desired when uh, fighting with her. So she's a decent ship overall, but uh, easily outweighed and outgunned by pretty much anything. The destroyers are more nimble than her, although lightly armored, so they can dance around her. While battleships will chew, or more bigger cruisers will chew her up in seconds. Right, uh, so with this battle raging on, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and uh, let me know what you think and let me know what are your suggestions for fighting in the Phoenix. I'm basically, my experience is that she should be more like a gunboat taking down uh, destroyers. However, I mean, in some cases she can hold her own when you're not re receiving the return fire, but if you wanted to, to go and uh, try and uh, a direct assault towards the battleship, just don't do it. Okay, so we are 
putting another couple of salvos in which destroyed this ship and led this fight to the conclusion. So there you go guys, like if you liked the video, connect with me on social media and I hope I will see you again in the next one. Thank you very much for watching, this is Gromforks signing off.